Hi, I'm MDG, and welcome to my channel. We are here for another deck tech breakdown, and today we're doing one for Higetsu Devouring Chaos. And this is going to be kind of catered towards more mid power, so like no combos or anything like that. Just a, I don't know, old fashioned drain punch face win cons, I guess. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, specifically with this commander, this is a commander, like when I saw it, I was really excited. I wanted to build something with it right away, but it kind of took me a few months to really figure out like what direction I wanted to take it just because, uh, I had like a lot of really fun kind of mm, demon steel stuff cards that didn't really have a home in like other decks that I had, but like I really wanted to try to make work with Higetsu. But after a little bit, I was just like, oh, maybe I want to be more subtle. So um, kind of going about this approach, I was trying to look at like, okay, what about this commander? Like what really is catching my attention about this commander that's making me inspired to build a deck for it? So one of the main things is the fact that it has a sack outlet in the command zone. So if you pay one uh, black and then sacrifice a creature, you can scry two. So I really like that ability because I like sack effects that can essentially help protect your like board or your creatures from potential exile effects. So stuff that's like deadly brolic or utter end, instead of, you know, whatever creature is being targeted there, you can just sacrifice it and they'll go to the graveyard instead of being exiled. So I really like kind of using that to get around those effects as well. And then, um, the other ability here that I think is incredibly powerful, uh, which potentially could make this commander hated on it at a table is if you pay two colorless and a mountain, you can exile the top card of your library. And when you exile an online card this way, uh, it'll deal damage equal to the exiled card's mana value to any target. So that means you could, you know, exile something that's like six mana costs and hit someone in the face for six damage. And that can be incredibly powerful, especially if it's late game and you can potentially like finish off your enemy just or not enemy, ooh, sorry, not that intense, uh, your opponent <laughs> uh, for, you know, like six damage to their face without having to just go to combat. So I think that's pretty cool because it makes things a bit more flexible with your potential win cons. And then at the end of the day, like if you're not using those sac effects or the exile, it's still like a decent body. It's a four, four that comes in for four mana. And I think like, you know, if, if you're wanting to try to just win through combat, like that's not a bad body to have, especially on a commander. So overall, like I think there's a, a Rakdos has like just a lot of really fun kind of sneaky-ish cards that you can go uh, for like a, I don't know, just to annoy your opponents or do some silly graveyard shenanigan things. But um, I also think like having those effects and stuff could potentially make you get hated on more because people don't like their stuff being stolen or you know you somehow exiling stuff and using the value from that so for example like puppeteer click uh when it enters the battlefield you can put target creature card from an opponent's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control it gains haste in the beginning of your end step you can exile it so again like stealing someone's card and then doing damage and then you just like exile that card afterwards like it it doesn't feel good like when you take stuff or have stuff taken i think where you're just gonna kind of put more of a target on on your back because again like no one wants to be killed by their own cards right so i think like that would draw more negative attention there's a card that does look really fun that i would like to just try out someday uh wildfire devils so when it enters the battlefield at the beginning of your upkeep you can choose a player at random and that player exiles an instant or sorcery card from their graveyard you can copy that card and you may cast that copy without paying its mana cost so in this case like you're gonna be exiling that card and then you're gonna be casting it for like value for yourself which i could see like someone doesn't want you to touch their graveyard because maybe they're trying to get that recursion value of some sorts but you know, it's not bad to shut that down, but I can just see people being like, Rah, I'm going to attack you because you hit my graveyard and used my own cards or whatever. So uh, another card that can be potentially maybe draw some hate towards you would be Gonti Lord of Luxury. 
When it enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of target opponent's library, exile one of them face down, and put them on the bottom of the library in random order, and you may look at and cast that card for as long as it remain exiled, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any type to cast that spell. So with that, like again, people don't want stuff exiled from their library, and they don't want you to steal that card from them by casting it for yourself. So I think again, like if you're having to get to, people may not like that, like you could just out of nowhere potentially deal a lot of damage to them based on like you exiling something with a high mana value. So I think like there, like if, if it gets you down on the field, like you're already gonna be drawing probably some attention. But I think if you have effects like this, you're just gonna draw more hate potentially instead of having other people focus maybe on the scarier board state. So I think like again trying to take like more of like a subtle like explosive approach for when con is where i want to at least try taking this deck for myself so in this there's a couple different win cons i try to build into this one of them is probably one that you already know about uh living death so living death i would only try to cast if i'm trying to win right so my graveyard would be like full of creatures and you know, hopefully one of those creatures would be either Terra the Peaks or Gary because of their ETB effects, right? And so how Living Death works is, like here's just a short summary of it, is if you have creatures on the board and creatures in your graveyard, those creatures on the board get sacrificed and you put the creatures in the graveyard onto the battlefield and the creatures that were on the battlefield go to the graveyard. So it can be like a mass reanimation effect that when those creatures from the graveyard enter the battlefield again. If you have stuff like Terror of the Peaks or Gary, you can choose how those ETBs like resolve in like specific orders. So if you want to drain first and you had like Veto in your graveyard, then you can potentially double the damage that you're going to be doing because when Gary ETBs, you drain everyone for whatever your devotion to black is. If you have Terror of the Peaks, Terror of the Peaks is going to ping people for the power attack power like creatures that you have that etb'd with terror of the peaks so that's gonna be a lot of damage potentially so if you have a big graveyard and no one's exiled it good time to try and resolve a living death and uh from you know other like a little bit of a risk there too is that you'd be also reanimating your opponents because this hits the whole board like everyone on the like in play is going to sacrifice the creatures that they have on the board and then bring back the creatures that they have in their graveyard to the board. So it's going to impact the whole group. So if you're really scared of something that's in someone else's graveyard, maybe not the best time to cast Living Death unless you know like you're going to win the game by closing it out after it resolves, right? So with that, Higetsu is focused on doing non-combat damage through that exile effect. So kind of adding either ways to scry so that if you want to stack the top of your library with those higher cost spells, it helps to know like, hey, do I have a land on the top of my library that I might want to move so that I can get to the next spell that could potentially do the damage that I want. So scry effects, Getsu has scry effects built in with it, but stuff with like Woe Strider, Read the Bones, and Viscera Seer. Um, those are going to be like good ways for you to just try to scry that's outside of just depending on the commander. Another thing too is other additional like non-combat pings. So you can think about this as like drain effects with like veto which would double up with you know anytime something gained um, a life you would use you can use veto's effects to essentially do more damage with that life gain effect. And then you have like Blood Artist, which is going to ping people for stuff that's dying. So if I'm sacrificing creatures, that's going to be additional damage done. And then Gary is obviously going to drain based on devotion. So those are very helpful effects. But what's cool about Vito is Vito, like if you want to try to swing out with a bunch of, you know, combat, uh, like creatures going to combat, then you can give everything lifelink to just do another huge chunk of drain damage based on you know giving everything lifelink so that's a cool way to also try to close out the game uh and then some other like kind of non-drain effects but still like can you know deal damage 
without having to go to combat would be like mayhem devil if you're sacrificing a bunch of treasures or other creatures especially like kind of adding up that value with like if you're trying to use Vasira seer to sack a creature so you can scry while you're sacking that creature mayhem devil is also going to deal damage because of that and then another card too to kind of like almost do like a tax effect to your opponents would be uh, Karavek the Merciless, whenever an opponent casts a spell, it deals damage equal to that spell's converted mana cost to any target. So I kind of think of that card too as like a backup Higetsu, because if Higetsu is still too expensive to recast, well, Karavek will do this uh, regardless, so you don't have to like exile things. It is dependent on like what your opponents are casting, and this probably will be a high target for removal if it does resolve, just because everyone's going to be impacted by it, but at least it's eating up like a removal piece that could have targeted your commander or some other creature but i do think this would be like an interesting like potential like late game um like way to help close out the board if possible another thing that i think would be really helpful for again another late game effect would be casting uh soren markov markov um because of that minus three ability target opponent's life total becomes 10. so if you you know have soren down and then you try to exile something off the top of your library and it's like a four or five cost well now you just like pretty much brought your opponent within like like a combat swing death away from like winning the game right like even if they had like a hundred life you could drop this bring their life total down to 10 and then try to drain them out or do some other non-combat like you know thing to just win the game hopefully so that's kind of how i was picturing using that was like if someone had a crazier like higher life total than me dropping this bring them down and then just poof trying to hit them out or if someone's like arch enemy at the table and someone's like ah oh, you know you can get them to this life total i can finish them off well drop soren target opponent goes down to 10. So maybe that seems like a bit of a cheap, like unfair way to kind of hurt someone or bring them down or, you know, close out the game. But, you know, it's a it's a interesting card and I think that will definitely like draw negative tension. So that's why I was like picturing it being more of a card that like would be like a game closer type move. So with this, we've identified some of the, the win cons and a lot of these creatures here too like if all those other ways that i described of like potentially trying to close out the game and win and deal damage to opponents i think there's enough flying like creatures with like trample or just flying with high attack power that you know can potentially win the game through combat damage as well but we still want to try to like protect our main win cons where we can so we have stuff like Thibault's trickery which is a counter spell in red and um it is a little chaotic though just because like you could potentially help your opponent like put something that's maybe a bigger threat onto the table because you choose one two or three at random its controller mills that many cards then exile the cards uh from the top of their library until they exile an online card with a different name than that spell and they may cast that card without paying its mana cost then they put the exiled card on the bottom of their library in random order. So counter spell still potential for it to give, you know, an, your opponent something you don't want them to have. But if let's say you're trying to cast living death to win the game and someone tries to counter it, well, you can cast Tibalt trickery and hopefully win that counter war. Uh, same with like cards like deflecting swap. If you know, someone's trying to remove Higetsu or maybe tear the peaks or exile like Gary, you can try using Deflecting Spot and hopefully take out something that they have a value on the board instead. So, uh, you know, just basic pieces like that. But aside from just trying to protect like creatures, maybe you're also wanting to protect stuff that you're using for like your sack outlets, right? Like your creatures uh, that you're sacrificing to maybe, you know, bring back all at once. Well, Prowling Geist Catcher is a really cool card to just protect like things that you're sacrificing. So if you're trying to get Blood Artist triggers or Mayhem Devil triggers, like Prowling uh, Geist Catcher can like help keep those creatures protected by preventing them from going to the graveyard. And instead they will be exiled under a uh, Prowling Geist Catcher so that when it leaves the bat battlefield, you can return each card exiled this way under your control again so basically what that does is you know if it, 
protects your graveyard from graveyard hate. So if, you know, Prowling Geist Catcher gets exiled because it doesn't say when it dies, it just says when it leaves the battlefield. So I think that's like a really good way. So if someone drops like a farewell and you, you're like, oh no, I need to protect my board, you can sacrifice like pretty much all your creatures and then it goes under Prowling Geist Catcher and then when Prowling Geist Catcher leaves, like those creatures go back to the board so you basically circumvented a farewell board wipe without it like ruining you know whatever graveyard play that you're trying to have here so i think that's like a really interesting card and i learned about this card because one of my friends is a really really smart mono black uh player and he has an ar deck that obviously is sacrificing creatures so added this card in there and it was a spicy spicy thing to say because like wow like just so much value was protected from that so i think this is just a really cool card i've seen it do work in decks and i think it would have a really good home here so uh with you know like protecting the board we have our win cons identified we also want to have an ability to like ramp and get value and have card selection right because we want to get to those win cons and uh treasure especially in rakdos is something that is very easy to generate, especially with cards like Dockside Extortionist, but there's other pieces of outside of just having treasure to ramp is card selection. And cards like Professional Facebreaker uh, help with that like card selection effect. So like when you are um, you have a treasure out, you can for free sacrifice that treasure with Professional Facebreaker, you exile the top card off your library, and then you could cast that card until end of turn. So what's cool about that, I think, is it helps with like an alternative for Higetsu. Yes, it's not ping, you know, opponents for damage, but if you need to get more card selection options out because you don't have like your normal, you know, card draw effects, uh, you know, Professional Facebreaker can help you potentially dig for a win con. And the other piece of this is cool too, is uh, Professional Facebreaker helps you make treasure because if a creature deals damage to an opponent, then you can create uh you know a, a treasure token so it also has menace too which i think is really handy it comes with like all, all the shenanigans you need to just do really cool stuff so i think professional face faker is just a really interesting card to add into this mix especially with just some treasure themes here um and then another thing too is when you're sacrificing stuff not necessarily just creatures like especially with treasures, you can actually use that for additional value. So with Jury Master of the Revue, um, whenever you sacrifice a permanent, you can put a plus one plus one counter on it, and then when it dies, it can deal damage equal to its power to any target. And so if you're sacrificing treasures, this is gonna get bigger, and um, like you can sacrifice this eventually when it gets big enough to deal a lot of damage to an opponent, and maybe you can't win through combat, but you can sacrifice Jerry and hit them right in the face for that. So I think that's really, really interesting effect. Uh, and also like with Mayhem Devil too, if you're sacrificing treasures, then you're also dealing damage that way because it deals one damage for like every treasure that you would sacrifice because it's sacrificing the permanent. So with those cards, I think like treasures can be looked at in this deck, not only as a way to ramp, but as a way to either use it for like a card selection or to deal additional damage so that's really interesting to think that like treasures has like multiple routes of providing value for uh you know this this type of deck so another thing to look at as well is maybe you need recursion effects outside of living death like you did your living death and it got countered or something and you're like no i would sacrifice this creature because i wanted it in my graveyard i was hoping living death would resolve well there are a lot of other ways that you can get recursion outside of living death especially in black and i think like there's a uh, frexian reclamation i think is sometimes a little too slow and i think in this deck i wouldn't want to use that card i would want to try to stick to something that's either going to be a body or something that's more versatile so for example animate dead is a wonderful enchantment aura it lets you pretty much grab a creature out of any uh, battlefield and then it comes back to the battlefield with a minus one to its attack power but you know if it's something that you need like a like a terror of the peaks and you're looking for like 
the ETB trigger, while Animate Dead can get it out. And just because it gets a little weak in the attack power doesn't mean that you can't still use it for your overarching strategy. A uh, card that I think is really going to be interesting in this deck is Olivia Crimson Bride because she has flying, haste, and then whenever she attacks you can return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped and attacking. It gains when you don't control a legendary vampire, exile this creature. So I think like if you wanted to keep bringing back like maybe Gary, so let's say like okay, you know, you drop this card and then Gary's like in your graveyard and you attack, well, Gary can come back out too. And then if you want to just keep doing that, maybe you have a sack outlet where you sack Gary. Gary goes back to the graveyard and every time you attack with Olivia, it just comes back out of the graveyard. Um, and I think that is just a really interesting way to get like value from that. But also like Olivia could bring back stuff like Junji, uh, Midnight Sky and Junji also has its recursion effect when it dies. Uh, you could put a target non-dragon creature card from the graveyard on, onto the battlefield under your control and you lose two life. Another card that I don't really see anyone play but I'm really curious like you know if it's going to be too costly this one's kind of more of an experiment but Orcus Prince of Undeath it has flying and trample and when it enters the battlefield, you can either choose to give everything minus X minus X until end of turn and you lose X life, or you can return up to X target creature cards with total mana value X or less from your graveyard, and they gain haste until end of turn. So I think like Orcus could also be used as like potentially like an explosive, like, you know, recursion. Maybe you get back like Junji if you have enough mana to. Like again, this could be like a pretty costly, like, I don't know way to reanimate stuff but i do like the fact that it can either be used to like remove tokens like one ones or uh it's just got flying and trample so i think like having trample effects is a good thing to have uh on your on your flying body so if anything it's just like somewhat of a decent potty to like hit someone in the face with but overall like i was just trying to structure this around like what can i do if like my living death gets shut down or my graveyard gets exiled and then what's another way that I can win if ETBs are shut down with like a Hushbringer or something. So with that I wanted this deck to be as versatile as possible so that if any of those like possible win cons get shut down what are some other ways that I can still generate value, hit face, or just drain with like non ETB effects essentially. So. Uh, that's that's the deck. I, I hope you found this interesting or somewhat informative if you're looking at building a Higetsu deck yourself. I'm also really curious like what cards you think should be added and if there's any cards that you're like, whoa, this is a staple. Why wouldn't you think to add this? Like, you know, something that feels like very, very important for Higetsu. I'm super curious like what you all are doing with this commander. And I'm also curious like what your experience has been. I haven't had a chance yet to test this deck out yet, but um, I'm really curious like if at your tables maybe you've been targeted a lot or if you feel like maybe this commander is just too expensive and there's not a whole lot of value to it. Uh, but yeah, thanks for hanging out and watching and have a good one. <laughs> Bye.